do you feel when you walk out to a reaction like that for a performance that you just put your heart and soul into? <laughs> it's very touching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I thought it's so late. I thought I was going to be asleep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, so so the the prospect of playing someone like Judy Garland, who's this, I mean, she's an icon. She's a legend. You know, she's meant so much to so many people for generations. You know, whether it's as, as Dorothy, whether where's the Vaz, to to the uh, 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 Stars Born, or even Judgment at Nuremberg, and you know when this first came along, the very first conversation that you had with Rupert Gould, the director, what was that first conversation, and what went through your mind about the prospect of playing Judy Garland? Well, I was speaking with David Livingstone, the producer, but beforehand I had a relationship with David. I'd known him for quite some years. We worked together a million years ago on, I think, the first Bridget Jones. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, well, I, I didn't, I was curious because it kind of surprised me. It didn't occur to me that I would be an obvious person to ask along on that journey, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was curious why. And uh, we started and I just have my doubts about what what he's you know I just have my doubts and he said but just don't don't decide he said just come come to LA, come to London and we'll and we'll try some things and see what happens and so that's that's what we did well when you had your doubts yeah when did you stop having your doubts never <laughs> never never not a not a day went by when I just kept thinking we can there's something else there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. When you, I, I'm presuming that you did, you did a lot of research, you know, you, maybe you read about her, you went online, thank, for cases like this, like the internet is a beautiful <laughs> yes, thing. Yes, yes, yeah, So, so tell us about like the sort of research process, you know, what you went through to, uh, to discover about Judy. I um, started with books, obviously, and, and the interviews that you talked about. I looked for everything that I could that she, um, you know, in, any interviews that she'd done, watching her television show, um, any biographies, autobiographies by folks who, you know, said that they knew her and shared their stories, um, anything that her children had written or any interviews that they had done. Um, and then her films and her music, uh, obviously. Um, and it was all at once. You know, and then we began trying things. We tried the music first, and then we tried, um, you know, just some sort of rudimentary sort of uh, makeup ideas uh, in just a little makeshift room with a, with a photographer just to see what might be possible and where we needed to go. So. When, when you were doing a lot, all this research, and like, was there a particular interview that you read or an interview that you saw that made you go, oh, okay, I think I get this a lot better now? Yeah, there there were so there were so many. Thank goodness, you know, a lot of her appearances on the talk shows, and you could sort of watch the trajectory of her career through these different interviews that she had done, um, uh, Dick Cavett and on the Tonight Show. But there was one that I came across that uh, that I know that I think you've seen since we first mm -hmm. spoke about the film, um, where uh, Barbara Walters interviews her, and she's sitting with uh, young Lorna and Joey. Um, and that one, that one touched me very deeply. Um, I, I felt like, uh, well, she asked her a question in, in the interview. She said, if you weren't, you know, a world famous performer, uh, what would you, what would you like to be? And she just kind of shook her head and said, nice lady, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and she was uncomfortable and, and she looked tired and she was holding on to her children in a way like for dear life, you know? It was almost like she recognized what hung in the balance of that interview and how important it was that she not be misunderstood or that she not make a misstep in, in some way that could be misrepresented. Um, and I felt like in that moment, you could see uh, the closeness that she shared with her children and how she adored them. You could see how proud she was. Um, and, and you could also see that, that vulnerability and that fear. And I, I just, 
I got, I, I felt so sad wondering who, who's protecting her in that moment? Who's advocating for her in that moment? And it was a, a real clue to me. Um, it was a little bit of a, of a catalyst for me in going forward, going into the project. Well, e even so, even with all the, the research that, that you, you, had, you had to do, like what were some of the like real points of connection mm -hmm. that you were like able to relate? Do, in, in, you mean as an actress or as a as a as a person? As Both. A, parallels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parallels. Um, well, uh, okay. Well, I'll start as an actress. As an actress, I understand the schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, I know what that looks like, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> yeah, um, and I know what it what it what it yes. Yeah. And what it what it takes from uh, from a person in terms of you know time and focus and energy and and the toll that it takes as well. But I didn't know about live performance and I didn't know the toll that that takes on a body. But I, I learned a little bit from the experiences that we had on the schedule that we kept in in the film. And I just can't imagine it. I can't imagine it um, as we get, you know went through the filming. I just became more and more, um, I don't know, just uh, in awe of what she was able to achieve considering the circumstances of her life where she was exhausted and, and, and not nurtured in so many ways and unable to step away and take a minute because of the you know fa financial uh, situation that she was grappling with, um, but that she was still able to sing and travel and perform at the highest levels for such an extended period of time was remarkable to me, remarkable. Um, and as a person, um, I know about that vast gulf between um, a public persona and the truth of a life. That's what I was drawn to. I was drawn to exploring the experience of a person who is living um, with these circumstances and trying to make her way through with very little support. Um, as a, as a mom, um, and how she was misrepresented in the world, and uh, that, that's what intrigued me, not the star that we know from her performances and her mannerisms and all of those things that are, are I, 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 iconoclastically Judy, but, um, but the woman at home alone who is just trying to get through something that's, that's tremendously challenging. You know, the, the thing that really struck me the first time I saw the film, which was uh, at the Telluride Film Festival that Friday, it was August 31st at 6.30. Uh, and uh, I, I saw you the next morning at, at Starbucks, and I was like, you know, I've interviewed you a bunch of times over the years, and I was really starstruck because I just felt like it was such a, uh, a tour de force performance. And, Thank you. right? <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, but what really struck me, I was going to say, was just how much I empathized, how vulnerable she was. I mean, this was not a melodramatic uh, camp. It was a, it was a really genuine, like revealing, honest, and very empathetic performance. So, like, what were the struggles and challenges to to make her empathetic and sympathetic and vulnerable and humanize her? Well, wow, that's a really good question. I, f I find that the circumstances alone uh, sort of elicit that t to me. I think that there was plenty out there that was satirical or that poked fun or that, I don't know, lampoon. Uh, but when you come to understand the circumstances, um, when they're contextualized, um, it makes it easier for you to understand, for, you know, for one to understand. Um, what a person might truly be going through. And uh, that was something that I loved about this project is that it sort of subverts the notion that she was tragic um, because it contextualizes those circumstances and you come to understand that, oh, well, where she finds herself at this point in her life is actually the consequence of decisions that she had nothing to do with making, you know, um, that were made on her behalf by people who couldn't know what the long-term implications of those decisions would be. And when you come to find that she'd been taken advantage of and uh, that she was 
you know, stolen from, basically, uh, and, and, and then didn't have the chance to step aside and take care of herself in a way that might have, you know, changed the course of her life. The, the choreography, mm -hmm. uh, tell, tell us about your choreographer, your vocal coach, mm -hmm. you know, your singing and performing live and how that differed, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And, and how working on that, the singing choreography differed from Chicago back in 2002. Thanks. Yes, round of applause for that one, too. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you very much. It was fun. I can't, I can't, can't complain about that. Either, can I? That was fun. That was really fun. Um, well, with this one, um, obviously, you know, um, I guess she's really part of her legacy is, is her... Um, famous relationship that, that she had with her fans. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Rupert, the director, uh, who comes from theater, has a background in live performance, obviously, and he knows um, about the, that, the uniqueness of that relationship and what's exchanged between an audience and a singer. And he felt that we wouldn't be doing the story justice if he didn't in some way capture that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I might have fought him on that. <laughs> <laughs> If, if I was given my druthers, I might have run the other way. But uh, so yeah, it was quite different. Um, but also with Chicago, um, the things that we were doing, um, they involved so many different uh, different angles and different. You know, and there's so many performers in each of the uh, in each of the numbers that it left a little less room for improvisation. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was going to cut together with any kind of continuity, oh, it I needed see. to be. You know. Down to the, down to the to, to the last beat, each wow. one, yeah. So the different, just different, different goals and different, you know, type of performances and that kind of thing. What was the first musical number that you filmed, and what was it like for you the first day that you filmed it? Uh, we started with um, with by myself, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's uh, scared. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was scared. I was thinking, those, those live people out there, <laughs> they got phones with cameras. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to speak for everyone in this room. You crushed it. <laughs> but, but also, Renee, to that extent, uh, tell us about the day that you filmed Over the Rainbow. It was the last, that was the, at the end of the five or six days that we had in the Hackney and Bard Theater. And the background artists um, uh, and I had shared stories all week. And so they weren't just, you know, a scary live audience anymore. They were, uh -huh. my, you know, my pals and my co-stars and we were working together. Mm -hmm. And we were sharing stories and talking about Judy and, you know, in between the camera moves when it didn't have to go change, I would sit on the stage and we'd talk and some of them were at the talk of the town and their parents had gone and we were all just sharing stories about our connection to her music or her legacy or what it was about her that we admired and it felt like that last number was sort of a culmination of all of that love that we were throwing around on that set during the week. It was very special. It, it, it's very special in the film. It just, you know, when the film just comes to that, that close, uh, you won't forget me. Uh, it just, it's just, it's heartfelt and so heartbreaking. Um, and it's just such a beautiful moment uh, that brings the whole film together. Um, the hair and the makeup, you know, when an actor is rehearsing and performing and, and uh, you know, remembering your lines. H how do you remember your lines, by the way? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> When they're good, they're pretty easy to remember. Yeah. You know, it's a conversation that makes sense, uh -huh. so that's helpful. Um, and I kind of pick them apart. You know, I draw all over them. I have my little circles and my different colored pens and language. And I like to start a long time before we begin because I don't want to be worrying about whether or not I know what word comes next. You know, right, right. Um, tear them apart. Um, and, uh, I, you know, dialect was a big part of it, and if I do my dialect work like I should, then the words just kind of go in, um, and I would FaceTime every night after work with Brett Tyne, who was my fantastic dialect coach on this. We would sit for hours after work and go over and make sure that we knew um, where she was at that point in the script and what it should sound like, and how much affectation, how much performance, how much vulnerability, how much fatigue, how much, you know, of the uh, you know, influence of, of, uh, of 
substances, how, you know, all of that. So the, the words kind of go in through the process. So, so when, you get, when you get the words and when you get it all down, mm -hmm. and then you, you think, you, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to do this, but then you get the wardrobe and the hair and makeup, and you look in the mirror, mm -hmm. and you're like, whoa, like how does that elevate you? Like how does like, the whole nine yards, how does that elevate your performance? Um, well, I liked, I, it, it's, it's, that's a, it's a really great question because it's, it comes together in such an interesting way um, because it's a removal in, in one sense because the more layers that you apply, the further away you are from yourself and the more safety I feel in, in disappearing. It's much, you know, it's much simpler to dive when you are, have nothing to do with yourself on your person, you know, so I love that. Uh, and at the same time, it's, I, I look at it kind of, I was an athlete growing up, and I kind of look at it um, as, as like preparation and before like a balance beam routine, you know, you've broken it down intellectually and then you have an emotional element that comes into it with creative expression and all of that comes together, but it's not just you. It's, it's, it's a group of people who have come together to build this thing. And so it's, it's, it's correct. There comes a point where I feel I don't judge it except that there's a point of readiness. And, and that's what I would see. I would see right, point of readiness. That sounds weird. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then the rest of it, which is kind of emotional, it just felt like it was alive on that set every day because her music was playing and people were trading stories and books and articles and photographs all the time, her voice in my head through the headphones. And, and it was every department. It was active. It was ongoing. And there was this excitement to it because every night someone would discover something new and bring it and share it and we'd have a conversation around it and it would be this new revelation and we'd be so excited to find a place to, to put it. So we were all kind of wearing this. We were wearing that sort of, that energy. So, so it sounds like there was a lot of experimentation while filming was actually happening. Oh, constant. It was wow. very fluid. It never stopped. It was always evolving and moving, moving. There was never a set point where we, it was determined what would be ever, you know. It was always moving. Yeah, it was wonderful. What was the hardest scene for you to film? I didn't take the time to think this is hard, you know. I didn't think about it in terms of difficulty. There were things that took more time. Um, the numbers took time. Um, building up to, to perform the numbers took time. Um, but difficulty, I don't know. Is there a different word? Uh, challenging. challenging. Thank you. <laughs> um, challenging. Um, can't, can't do that either. <laughs> can't do it. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> um, no, it was all just it was all, again, it was fluid, it was moving, there was no time to sit back and go, boy, this is tough, mm -hmm. you know? It was just do, you know? Right. Yeah, how, that's right. <laughs> that's right. How long was the shoot? 20-something uh, days. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, so something like that, 30, like a week, we had a month or something. Am I telling the truth? Is that right, 27 days or something like that to shoot, something like that? That's something. a fast shoot. But do you think that's a fast quick. shoot like that? actually um, was, was worked in your favor in the sense that like you didn't have time to overthink things and you just got, you, you were able to just uh, uh, make it more natural. Probably, yeah, yeah probably, wow. yeah. I mean, I love a schedule because it keeps you going and you don't, ha you don't have time to second guess anything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're going, it's like being on the roller coaster. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> what was it you know. like for you the first time you watched this film? I watched it with the casting crew in London um, after Telluride, after Toronto, after uh, the premiere. Um, I went and watched it with the casting crew, and that felt right to me because it was a shared celebration, and so it felt right that I should sit with them and we should be together to watch the thing, you know? Uh, so we could all be uh, in the same place, you know? What makes Rupert Gold a great actor's director? Uh, subtext. He's really, really, really interested in uh, what's going on 
behind the words. And he also has, does this thing where he wants to be sure that like when we have emotional experiences in our lives, it's in your body, you know? It's not just something that comes out of your mouth in a conversation, but you feel it. Uh, so, you know, like with the by myself mm -hmm. uh, number, he wanted that performance and the circumstances around the performance to sort of mirror the um, her, her, her life at that time. And, uh, you know, we're not sure how she's going to do. We don't know if she's going to make it. And the words, of course, reflect the circumstances, the words in the song, the lyrics in the song. And so when we were putting it on its feet for the first time, which I wasn't ready for, <laughs> um, and singing and moving in the, in the rehearsal space, he had me walk over and he said, um, push, push this piano. Just push the piano, push the piano, now sing because he wanted for that struggle to feel, to be, you know, in my bones. When all's said and done, after you're wrapped, even after you've watched the movie for the first time with the cast and the crew, mm -hmm. and you look back on the making of this movie, wow, uh, how did this challenge you as an actor like never before, just as a whole? I had to, yeah, I had to grow. I had to grow in a lot of ways. I had to, uh, had to change the way that I thought about myself, really. And I had to rethink the presumptions that I had made. Uh, and I, you know, I got a couple kicks in the pants, you know, to have some courage. Well, this is a brave, bravura performance. So, uh, Two requests. One, please stay seated while we exit. The second is Judy is now on home entertainment. So now that you've seen the film, for those of you who actually are seeing it for the first time, spread the word. Go on, go on social media. Tell people. Go on Facebook. Go on Instagram. Go on Twitter. You know, you in the back, if you're still using MySpace, that's totally <laughs> fine. And ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a round of applause for Renee Selwiger. Hey!